What's happening guys? This is Matt from Flow Guys and we're back with another video and today we're going to be talking about using LLMs with Webflow. Let's get into it. So today we're going to be talking about how you can use an MCP to talk to Webflow, specifically the Webflow CMS, effectively using natural language within your normal AI tool to extract data from the CMS and also to put it back in. This could be a real game changer for you if you work with Webflow data a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're a developer working for, as a freelancer in an agency, this could really be a big time saver. And I'm gonna show you some examples of how you can use this in the real world. Let's go. So the first thing you're gonna need is Claude installed on your computer. So Claude is similar to ChatGPT, which you're probably familiar with. Claude is Anthropic's version. So they have their own model, it's called Claude. Um, specifically, their latest model is called Claude Sonnet. And they have a desktop application that you can install on your computer and just use it just as if you're using ChatGPT. Uh, it does essentially the same thing. Um, it's probably on par with um, OpenAI's ChatGPT, uh, but it's particularly good uh, with code. It's well renowned for that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download Claude onto your machine. To do that, go to claude.ai forward slash download and then you will see uh, some options depending on what platform you're on mac windows and download and install that on your machine once you've installed that open up the application and this is what you'll be greeted with so very similar to chat gpt if you're used to that a simple text box where you can ask the llm any kind of question let's just check it's working how are you today And there you go, everything's good. The next thing we need to do is install the MCP server. So you can find instructions on how to do this in the Webflow developer documentation. I will link to that in the description for you, um, but it's fairly simple, um, but there are a couple of prerequisites you will need to have Node installed on your machine. If you're a developer, you probably already have that, but if not, Again, I'll leave a link down in the description. It's a bit beyond this video, talking through installing that, but I'll leave a link in there to how to do that. So the next step is to follow the instructions and go to the Webflow API Playground. So let's just open that up in a new tab. And I will just log in using my Webflow account. And then if I go back and refresh that, now that I'm logged in, I can see that I have got an option here to log in, click that again. And what this will do now is this will allow, will ask me to authorize a workspace or a specific site, and that will give access to the data in that site to the MCP. So I've set up a test MCP site for this particular demonstration. So I'm just gonna authorize it just for that site. So it hasn't got access to all the sites in our workspace. It's just that one site. Now that we've done this, it's now given us an API key. If you hold down the little eye icon there, you can see what that is. Now, frustratingly, it doesn't seem to be a simple way to copy that, um, which is a bit odd. But anyway, if you go to uh, one of these examples here, choose the TypeScript one, you can actually see the API key there. You can double click that to highlight it. Uh, Command-C or Control-C if you're on Windows to copy that. And then for now, let's just paste that somewhere. So we've got a reference. I'm just using VS Code here. So I'm just going to create a new document and just paste that in. So if we can now go back to our Webflow instructions, we've got our API token. The next thing we need to do is add the following snippet to your client's configuration file. And in this case, the client is the Claude desktop app. Now it's worth mentioning that you can only do this with the Claude desktop app. You can't use the web version of Claude on their website because your MCP server is running locally to your machine and the web version doesn't have access to your local machine. So that's why you have to use the desktop app version instead. So let's just copy this example here. Let's go back to the file where we pasted in our API token. And we're just going to paste in 
the code snippet that they've given us, the configuration snippet. And you can see here, it says Webflow token, and there's a little space for your API token. So now I'm just going to move that from there. I'm gonna paste it into there and then just get rid of those first two lines. So effectively, this is the configuration we need to set up our MCP server. The next thing we need to do is add the MCP server to our AI client. So in the documentation that Webflow provides, they give you instructions for adding it to Cursor, which is an AI focused IDE and also Claude Desktop. In this case, we're focusing on Claude Desktop. So we open up Claude and we go settings, which is in the Claude menu here, settings and then developer. Now, I've already enabled developer mode, so I see this option, but if you don't see this option in your settings, look for an option uh, within the menu here. I can't remember which one it was in, but it's called enable developer mode. So once you enable that, then when you go into settings, you will see this extra developer option here. Next thing we need to do is edit the configuration. So we click this button and all that's gonna do is open up uh, a folder window with the configuration file highlighted. Now I'm just gonna right click that and choose open with Visual Studio Code. And all I'm gonna do now is the little snippet that we produced just now. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna overwrite everything that was in that config file. And I'm gonna paste that in. And I'm just gonna hit Command S or Control S if you're on Windows to save that file. What you need to do now is go back to Claude and you need to restart Claude. So if I just go Claude, quit, now I'm going to go back into Claude, open it up again. And this time, if we go into our settings and click developer, we will see now that we have a Webflow option in here. And it says running, so that's all good. That means everything was successful. If there was any issues, there would be an error here and most likely a link to be able to view the log files. So that will give you an idea of maybe what's gone wrong. Um, but fingers crossed, if everything went smoothly, then your MCP Webflow server will now be up and running. Um, so there's no other options you need to worry about that. You can close that. And now here's where the magic happens. Okay, so we've spun up a little test site here. Um, it's pretty minimal. There's just a, just a one page and there is a blog collection that is currently empty. So let's go into Claude, make that window a bit bigger. And first of all, you can see a little hammer icon here with a number next to it, 16. And that is basically how many MCP tools are available for Claude to use. Now we've only installed one MCP server for Webflow, but you could have multiple servers installed and configured for Claude to use. So it can interact with Webflow, it can interact with whatever systems you've configured it for. And if we click on that item, it will tell us all the tools that Claude has available to it. So these 16 tools are all within the Webflow server, as you can see, and the names of these will give you an idea of what those tools do. So collections get is obviously going to get all the collections from Webflow. Collections items create item, that's going to create an item. So that's a little overview of the tools at Claude's disposal. So let's say, for example, generate me 10 new blog posts. The body copy should be two paragraphs in length and contain at least one external link that doesn't open in a new tab. And you'll find out the reason for that in a minute. So off it goes, it generates our 10 blog post drafts. Okay, so there's the copy for our 10 posts. Would you like me to make any adjustments to these posts? No, thanks. Please publish them to Webflow. So it's asking for permission to use this tool. 
this site's list. So I'm going to allow that. So effectively that's asking the Webflow API what sites it has access to. Now it's asking to use the collections list tool. So I'm going to allow that. And now it's listed all the collections and it's found a blog's collection. So now it's going to publish each of those posts to that collection. And now it's asking for permission for the collection items create item live tool. We'll allow that. So it's now asking to use the site's publish tool. So I'm going to allow that. So it's tried to publish it. And there you go. I've successfully published all 10 blog posts to your Webflow site, Matt's MCP test site. Here's a summary of what was done. Right, let's have a look. Let's go back into Webflow. Let's just refresh that page. And as if by magic, we have 10 new blog posts within Webflow. Now, of course, we could have done that within Webflow using their auto-generate tool, but let's, for this example, assume that these are real-world blog posts on a client's website, and the reason I asked for the external links not to open in a new tab is because we actually had a request from a client who had over 300 blog posts all with external links within the content that didn't open in a new window. Now, they asked us, can we fix this? Our initial thoughts was that's going to be a bit of a nightmare going through 300 posts manually, finding those links, selecting the option to open in a new tab, saving it, publishing it. As you can imagine, pretty long-winded process. So we thought maybe we can use the Webflow MCP server to do that for us. So let's try that. So for example, let's just Let's just go back into the designer and publish this just so that we can take a look at one of these blog posts. So let's have a look at our blog template here. Let's just open that up in a new tab. So you can see we've got a new blog post here and this link here is an external link, but it opens in the same tab. So that's not ideal. So this is the exact problem that one of our clients had. They had over 300 blog posts, all littered with external links. Some of them did open in a new window, some of them didn't, and they wanted to fix that. So let's go back into Claude, and we will now say, can you make sure that all the external links in the blog posts open in a new tab? Let's see what it does. So it's asking for permission to use another tool. Let's allow it. Yeah, it's so very well. That's right, baby. So now you can see it's updating each post to add the target blank attribute to the links within the rich text fields. So it's going through them one by one. Oh, yeah, you go, yeah. I'll see you there soon. Okay, it says it's done. It's added the target bank attribute. And it says it's published them. So it says publish the site to make these changes live. Let's go back in there. Let's now refresh this and let's try it. And look at that. It's opened it in a new tab. So it's done exactly what we need. We didn't need to go in manually into every CMS item to manually go into the rich text field, find the link, click on it, click the settings, click open a new tab, click that, click save one by one. And, and this, the, obviously this example, we've only got 10 blog posts. Imagine if there was hundreds or even thousands. Now, sure, it might take a little while for Claude to process everything and push it back up, 
But once you set it going, you can walk away and leave it, come back later, and it's all done. A massive, massive time saver, or at least saving a lot of a headache for you or one of your team members. So hopefully that shows a real good real life example of what can be done with an MCP server that's connected to Webflow and connected to an LLM like Claude. Love to hear your ideas. Let us know in the comments if you've thought of any great use cases. Have you used the MCP server within Webflow? What did you use it for? We would love to know. Hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.